Fantastic. So, so far we're doing a great job. We're actually getting all of these um, uh, drawing tools down absolutely pat. The next thing that we're going to do is place a grid across this drawing. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing that. Um, you can actually create a drawing tool that will draw a grid specifically as part of the floor. And you do that by converting the walls to being effectively a grid. Now, that's really good if you've got complex uh, multicolor maps. But there's a much easier way of doing it for a map like this. And I'll show you. You simply make sure that the color that you've got selected over here is the same color as the background. It is because we haven't changed it. You go to draw and you go hex or square overlay and we say that it's a square grid and the grid spacing is in this case we want it to be five foot. Note that we've got the uh, line width set to zero which is exactly right. We don't want labeling. Now very important before you switch off you don't want labeling switch off labels outside. Um, and that's basically it and then you just go apply and then you mark from one end to the other end of your map. So let's just go down now and zoom in to there so you can see that our, our grid has been drawn but it doesn't look quite right because if you look closely the grid sits over the walls and it just makes the walls look not good. Easy way to solve that by default, that grid has been put onto a sheet called grid, which is here. Now notice that the grid sheet is currently above the wall sheet. So what we want to do is we want to move this sheet up until the walls sit just on top of it. Now if we do that, and I'm going to turn off the, uh, the grid, you can now see that we have what appears to be a really nice grid. Personally, I think this grid is still too strong in colour. In other words, it's going to detract from other elements on the map. So how do we get around that? Well, really, really easy. Again, we'll do this through Sheets. You click on Sheets. Now notice the grid layer has no effects on it at, at the moment at all. I'm going to switch effects on, and I'm going to create a new effects sheet. I'm going to call this Old School. So we're now creating a custom script. I'm going to call it Old School Blue. There we go. Just so that we know. Click on OK. And then I'm going to add a transparency and we'll just leave it at 50% and now when I drew, oops, you know what I've done is I've also left all the other activities on as well such as the walls I want to get rid of all of those, I don't want any of that let's see if there's anything else, no, I don't want the edge fader no, I don't want that, no, I don't want the glow no, I don't want the wall shadow yeah, I want the transparency no, I don't want that one so you can see I'm turning off all these effects that we inherited from the previous uh, set. That's fine. Now you can see that our grid line looks much fainter. It looks more like that old school paper. And yet it doesn't overflow the rest of the, the, the map. And the nice thing with doing a grid this way is it doesn't matter whether our floors are all sorts of unusual shapes or where they are on the page. For example, I'm going to draw um, a, a cave over here, completely disconnected from the rest of the map. And when I redraw, you'll actually see that the grid comes straight onto it. It doesn't matter, it's in, and that grid will be perfectly aligned to anything else on the rest of the page. So, really quick way of putting a grid on, and that's how I'm going to recommend it. Now, that was one way of doing a grid for our maps. There is another way, and this is a really useful way of very quickly creating grids on your maps uh, when you're mapping rather odd shapes uh, in full color maps. So, for example, science fiction battle maps, all, all sorts of things. Not as useful or, or maybe a little bit cumbersome for this type of mapping, but it's still a very, uh, very useful technique. So I'm going to show you now anyway. And what we're going to do is we're going to say that we want five foot uh, grids, but instead of creating and drawing a grid, we're going to use what's called a, a, a um, scalable hatching. To do that, we're going to create a new type of fill style. It's going to be a scalable hatching style. Um, I'm going to go uh, new and it's asking us what is the name of this in this case I'm going to call it 5 foot grid because I'm really imaginative now we've got our 5 foot grid named here but all of this all of these settings are totally messed up so for, th for the start we're going to make the sample with 25 feet the angle is going to be 0 so the, the first line that we're drawing 
and it's going to be solid. It's got an angle of zero and it's going to have a spacing of five foot. It's going to have a zero offset and a zero offset. Nice and easy. Set two is going to be at 90 degrees. It's going to have a spacing of five foot and five foot. Set three, no lines. So keep everything at zero. Set four, no lines. So what we've done is we've said the first line in our crosshatch is going to be five foot apart and it's going to be uh, at zero degrees. And then the other one, set two, is going to be at 90 degrees and again five foot, five foot. So if we click on OK. Now the reason why we couldn't actually see that in the preview is that I had that turned off. So if we come back in here, now you can see that in fact we've got our grid all set up. Easy. So there's a, a scalable hatching um, methodology, but that's just the hatching. We can now use that pretty much for any type of drawing. But I want to create a floor that's going to automatically use that. So to do that I'm going to click over here on floors. Oops. Click over here, right click on the floors. I'm going to select our default floor. We're going to use that as the basis for construction of our new drawing tool. I'm going to call this floor with grid. So a couple of ways that we can achieve this, we could either say that the fill style is going to be, zoom up the top, you'll now see our five foot grid there. So you could try doing that. And it's just going to give you a white grid. Not that useful. Not really that useful. So what do you do? This is where we get really funky and really cunning. I'm going to come back to the drawing tool. Go to Advanced, we've got our grid. I'm going to go back to the Properties and I'm going to go, I don't want the fill style to be solid there. So I'm going to come down, I'm going to make that as solid. So I just want the solid floor. If we do that, I'm going to save the settings, our tool will now just give us exactly a solid floor. So it's still not quite right. How do we get the grid on top of the floor? Yeah, there's more. Use method to my madness. Advanced. So with that selected, what we're going to do is we're going to tell it that it's got an outline. But in Campaign Cartographer, an outline can be literally an outline, a wall, if it has a thickness for the line. But if it doesn't have a thickness for the line, if that's zero, it's a fill. And that's what we're going to use here. So I'm going to make the current color, I'm going to make it um, a nice light blue. Uh, I could make it any colour I want, but we'll make it a nice light blue. The line width I'm going to fix to 0.1. The layer I'm going to create, instead of being a wall, I'm going to have it as a hex and square grid, and the sheet is going to be on the grid. Um, actually, I'm sorry, I've made a mistake there. The line is zero, very important. The line has got to be zero. Um, and the fill style to use is, this is where we put our a five foot grid in, click on OK, click on OK. Now you can see what we have is a white floor with a blue grid. Save the settings, yes, and watch what happens to the magic when we draw it this time. Pretty cool, huh? So, just to recap that, you can create scalable hatchings that represent a grid. Um, you can then use that as an outline but set it to a zero width so it actually is a fill across the floor that you're drawing and just like uh, one of the other wonderful things is that uh, you can come here and you can turn the grid lines if you hide them you can turn the grid lines off on that because it's been put down as a separate layer on top of the floor but just on top of that floor fantastic tool for when you're working with maps that might have other colored areas that you don't want the grid to go over so that's it for this part of the tutorial